This feature came about as an unintended consequence of thumbnails. <laughs> this reloads live now. But is that a good thing? What I wanna do today is I actually wanna to talk to you guys because I've had meetings about um, the new thumbnail stuff that I've been doing and I've kind of come up with this new thing called thumbnail driven development. I was showing you guys that we have a somewhat unintentional side effect where if we have like our blue material and let's just say I have a sphere and the sphere is this blue material, which is obviously not blue at the moment, but we have a blue material, cool. If I open this up externally, so I've got it here in VS Code and I edit it, right? So I change this to like one, hit control S, you can see in instant changes, thumbnails changed and the thing in the, in the scene is changed, right? And it's kind of like, oh cool, you know, Hazel has hot reloading. That's not like, you know, huge news, but it's, it's nice. It's definitely nice to have, and it's especially very, very snappy because it's Hazel, Hazel's quite fast, which is cool. The reason this is hot reloading, believe it or not, is because of the thumbnails. And that's why I call it thumbnail driven development because this feature wouldn't actually be in Hazel if it wasn't a completely unintentional side effect from us trying to implement a thumbnail system. Let me demonstrate. If I back out of this directory so that we no longer see the thumbnail and I change this, nothing. It's red now. Nope. It's emissive now. No, it's not. Until I step back into this directory. Ready? There it is. Isn't that wild? Why? Why is this happening? Well, because this is how it works. So when we render all of these thumbnails over here, yeah, we go through them and we have to ask ourselves whether or not the thumbnail is an accurate representation of the content on disk, right? So you have a file on disk, it's this, yeah? Does this thumbnail represent that file on disk accurately? How do we tell? Well, we can look at the date modified basically. So the timestamp, the last write time of the file. When the thumbnail was generated, it retains kind of what timestamp that file had. And then we compare it to the current file on disk. And if they're different, then the file is different. Like the thumbnail is, it could have been the same file, but it's probably been changed, right? It's modified. It's got a different date and time. So what do we do? We have to regenerate the thumbnail because we want the most accurate representation. So how do we do that? Well, how do we generate the thumbnail for this material? We have to load the material, obviously. We have to load the material into the asset manager so that we can create this image with that material. But did you just say load the material into the asset manager? But the asset manager is responsible for all the assets. Therefore, it's responsible for the assets that we see in the viewport as well, right? So what's interesting is that because we tried to regenerate the thumbnail to make it the most up-to-date representation of this physical file on disk, it caused an asset reload in the whole engine and it gave us this. I mean, this is weird. It's cool, like it's really cool, right? Because again, we can completely 100% lean into the fact that Hazel can reload assets this fast because no other engine, as far as I'm aware, can reload assets this fast, right? Just by modifying this, you just change everything immediately. Like this is, seems amazing. And again, like, you know, if we open up Fork um, and we look at like, you know, this and here it is over here and blue, right? If I revert this file, hey, it's back to what it was, right? So picture this, you're working with an artist, you're playing your game, yeah? They update some 3D models or change some textures. You pull their latest commit live while playing the game, it uploads like that. That's cool. And that's the Hazel advantage, right? So we lean into that because that's what we wanna do. We want this to be nice, right? We want this to be cool. We wanna take advantage of the fact that because Hazel is simple and not bloated and crazy, yeah? We can do this that quickly. Now, if you guys are trying to learn programming and math, Listen up, I got something for you. Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video that you can try out for free for 30 days. Brilliant.org is an amazing website filled with lots and lots of really high quality courses on various STEM topics. Recently, they've been expanding on their programming courses. They're really good for beginners to learn how to think like a programmer. They'll help you learn essential coding elements like for loops and conditionals in like a fun visual way. And they even have these Python courses where you'll actually start building programs. But then they also have this huge library of really good math courses, which I think is super important if you're trying to learn programming and especially if you wanna make game engines like Hazel. And the reason why I love Brilliant specifically is because their courses are super visual, engaging, interactive. They have these widgets you can play with and they'll quiz you every step of the way to make sure that you're actually learning and retaining the information. And guess what? You can try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days. Just go to brilliant.org slash the channel link will be in the description below. And that link will also get you 20% off an annual premium subscription. Huge thank you as always to Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. I really like this and I think it's really cool. 
And so what I want to do is obviously take advantage of this. Now, why is this currently unacceptable? Because again, the thumbnail system drives this whole thing. Yeah, indicated by the fact that I can back out of this and I can do whatever I want with this. Yeah, and then until I go back in, it's not going to change. That's weird. The other thing that we were thinking about was the asset manager, right? And I'll probably make a video about Hazel's weird asset manager, but in general, like it was weird that, um, you know, most engines you import assets. Like you have to physically drag the asset into the engine and then it will import it. Like an Unreal Engine will make a U asset out of your mesh or whatever, or out of any asset, I guess. Um, and then that lets you pick your import settings, all your metadata, all of everything, right? And then the U asset will retain a path to the original source asset it was kind of created from as well in the metadata, whatever, right? And then every time you change the original file, it has to kind of do a re-import into that U asset or you do a manual re-import, whatever. It's gonna have to regenerate that U asset file because the file that it is using inside the engine that you imported is not the same as the file you're editing as an intermediate format. Which to me has always been weird because it's like, well, you're in the editor, bro. This isn't a shipped game. So why are you in a custom format already? Why aren't you just leaning on the fact that this is, this is intermediate? What we see here, this editor, this is intermediate. This is not final published stuff, right? And like, you know, there's lots of reasons to transition to like a runtime format in the editor. I'm not saying it's bad design. I'm just saying that there's a good point that maybe we should be treating this kind of as it, it is in fact the intermediate design level kind of part of this. So why not just retain the fact that we have an FBX file or a GLTR file because that is our intermediate format and we use that and we want to maintain that reference, that link, because that we're currently working on the game. That's why we're in the editor. So clearly we expect these files to be updated and changed. The way that Hazel works is that um, you don't ever import anything. Yeah? If, like, check this out, yeah? Here, here, are my, here are my meshes. Let me make a new folder here. I'll call this stream. I'll copy avocado.gltf. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna show this in Explorer. This is this, right? I'm gonna paste it in here. I'm just gonna refresh this view. Yeah? Here's my avocado. This, yeah, I didn't import this. I simply placed this into a directory, yeah? That is part of the assets directory. And I did have to hit this refresh button because we've disabled automatic file watching and stuff like that just because it tends to cause problems and I don't really like it. Yeah, so we have to press this refresh button manually or we can just restart the editor, obviously. If we dump a bunch of assets here and then start up Hazel or load the project, then obviously it will find the fact that there are new assets. Yeah, so that happens automatically. So then how do you use this 3D model though? Because here's the problem though. When you go down this route and you don't have like this whole, like I'm dragging my file into Hazel now. Yeah, so give me like my import options. Then what happens is that you have no way to specify certain import things, right? Like uh, for example, does this have a skeleton? Like, do I want animations imported with this? What kind of sub meshes do I want to use from this? What about materials? What about whatever? Yeah, but here's the thing. Even though this is here and you see this here, you can't use this. If you want to use this and you can try use this, yeah, but you can't use a mesh source directly. You need to make either, and I've talked about this before in Hazel's new mesh system, I made a video called something like that. It's like a devlog from two or three years ago. There are two types of meshes. There's a static mesh and there's a dynamic mesh. And so when I try and use this in the scene by dragging it in, hey, look, that looks like an import dialogue, doesn't it? And then what I can do is I can pick static dynamic mesh. Let's go with static because it's not going to move and I don't want to replicate uh, the hierarchy within this mesh as entities, right? So I'll pick a static mesh. I can pick a path for it. Sure, I'll just leave it in assets meshes, whatever. You can see it's gonna be a .hs mesh, Hazel static mesh, right? I can generate colliders for it, I can do whatever, there's no skeleton, I'm not gonna create an animation graph, whatever. Yeah, there's my mesh, I hit create, now it's in the scene. There's my avocado. I love that I picked an avocado because I'm a big fan. And so what has it actually done? Well, let me go back here and I'll search for avocado. So here's my two avocados, I've searched for it, I've searched for avo, yeah, that's why they're both here. One is a mesh source, one is a static mesh. So what is a static mesh then? Because it looks a lot like the mesh source. Well, if we open it externally, which just lets us open it in an external program, not inside Hazelnut, it's gonna open in VS Code because it's just a YAML file and this is what it has. It's got metadata associated with that. Because instead of us basically being like, okay, because um, in a way this is how the other engines seem to do it, right? You basically have your original, let's just say GLTF file, and then from there, it's kind of like, okay, well, this GLTF file gets imported, 
right? So what happens when we import is we basically take the actual mesh data. So this has all of the vertices and let's just say mesh data. We take all of this mesh data and we basically we copy it across and we've created, let's just say a U asset file. Yeah. And that contains what? That contains our metadata and our real data, which is in green. We have our metadata, we have our real data. So that's kind of been copied across and that's it. And we don't have the link to that. We still know in the metadata what file it was created from or whatever. It's still kind of within this U asset, self-sufficient, whatever, right? Whereas Hazel says, okay, well, why have this data here and here? Yeah, let's not do this. Instead, in Hazel, dot H mesh or HS mesh, this is the entire HS mesh. Yeah, and this doesn't exist. Why? Because this just simply links to here. That's it. Hazel mesh is explained. Like for this avo, yeah, I created a static mesh out of it. Obviously this just links this. So you can create like, I don't know, 300 avocados if you want and all have and have them all have different metadata still linking to that single uh, data source, basically that single mesh source that has your actual vertex data and material data and whatever else. The moral of this, is I guess to just say that like, yeah, I don't think I'll be changing Hazel's asset manager. I think we've like, I had a chat to the team, had a chat to a few people on the team. Like we decided that like, yeah, it's pretty cool that Hazel works like this, meaning that everything is automatically imported in the assets directory. The asset registry is a reflection of that. Let's just say you do have an asset there that you don't use, or maybe you just, you know, cause a good example is like, I just downloaded like a 3D model pack or an asset pack. Yeah. Like Kenny released an asset pack. Let me just grab all of that. I don't think I'll use all of it, but like, I want to see it all in Hazel. Easy. You just import it all into Hazel. <laughs> and how do you import it into Hazel? You just dump it in your assets directory. It's there now. And so you might be like, okay, well, isn't that a bit wasteful because I didn't want to import all of those, right? Well, no, because the only waste you've created, apart from, I guess, cached thumbnails, the asset registry, which is this thing on disk. Yeah. Inside your assets directory. Here it is, asset registry. This asset registry, uh, it's, it's this text file, which contains every single asset. It's the registry, right? So it's the registry of all the assets that you have in your project. This it creates this automatically from everything that you have in your assets directory. Yeah. So this is all here and it's got an asset handle. It's got an asset type. It's got a file path, whatever. So if you do in fact have unused assets, what's the consequence? Three lines of text in a file that does not get shipped. And of course the asset's not going to be packaged if it's not in use because Hazel only packages for shipping assets that are actively used. So there's no real consequence of automatically importing assets. The only consequence is a benefit and the fact, and that is the fact that it's ready to use in Hazel instantly. So I think we decided to keep it that way, which is great because I don't have to waste time rewriting a system that turns out is actually, we think is better than the alternative that we were going to rewrite it to. Um, and so then we come up to this whole live, live reloading thing. Yeah. This feature came about as an unintended consequence of thumbnails. Yeah. So this wasn't planned. I just noticed that, oh, Hey, <laughs> this reloads live now. And it didn't used to, I was just thinking about this and I was like, okay, well, why do we have this situation where assets on disc differ from assets in memory? Like, why is that ever a, a thing or a good thing? Wouldn't it be cool if what you saw in the viewport in Hazel was always a hundred percent up to date reflection of the physical assets on the file system? When would you ever not want them to be in sync? And then like, again, I was thinking about scenarios of this and I'm like, well, that sounds great. Yeah, that sounds great. Because if I have a scene and I'm looking at, like, I'm looking at a scene, let's just say I'm doing a playthrough. I'm doing a play test of my game. I'm doing like, I'm playing the game. Yeah. And then like my artist commits a whole bunch of changes to some textures or some models. Yeah. I could, I could like, you know, I could keep playing my game here or whatever on like one monitor. And then I could just open up fork or like, you know, my Git client, I'll just do a Git pull basically. Yeah. While the game is running and it would just update like that because the files changed on disk and that is a reflection of the files as they are like the most up-to-date version of the files is what you see in the viewport. 
because Hazel is always aware of like the file on disk. Do I have that version? And I was thinking about like, okay, well, sure. I mean, that sounds good. Like what's the downside? And then I started thinking, okay, well, people, people sometimes like have a little bit of a phobia of disks, right? Because you know, hard drives used to be slow. I mean, we're, we're in 2024 now. Everyone, basically everyone has an SSD. I mean, look at some of the stuff that like the PlayStation 5 is doing. Like they were like, you know, in that tech demo or whatever, they, they could, because of their blazing fast, like decompression chip and SSD and whatever, you know, they were able to just like basically frost some call assets off of memory and into disk, like, and just load it on demand as the frame gets rendered or whatever, because it's like that, because it's so fast, especially if it's in like a runtime format, which just wouldn't be it. But sure, you know, and then obviously we have like Windows 11 and we have DirectX 12, which has that direct storage or whatever thing that can load straight from disk to GPU memory. Like the future seems to be just, you know, the, the, that coupled with the fact that SSDs are getting faster and faster. I've, I've got an M2 SSD here that's really fast. We're kind of trending towards the fact that like disks, RAM, you know, it's beginning to blur. It's beginning to kind of, I mean, you know, RAM's still faster, but like it's, you know, it's a lot closer than it used to be back in the day. So then what would be the big deal with loading all this, all these assets all the time and making sure that we have like up-to-date versions. Because again, guys, like again, you, sure, you do a git pull, that's gonna be a, a bit slow while it's pulling. Like, that, I think that's okay, right? You're doing a git pull, you're not doing that every frame, <laughs> I hope, <laughs> right? Or you're, you edit a material or a 3D mesh. That's one single 3D mesh that you just re-exported and you want it to change like that. For like what, for a few frames while it loads it? Oh no, a stutter during development. Like that's not an it's an non it's not it's not an issue. That's why like I really feel like what I want to do going forward is Hazel should just always have the latest up asset up to date so that it works like I was just showing you guys. You change the asset, it updates instantly. You got your little pink objects or whatever. You want them to be back to blue or whatever. You just save the file, it's done. Yeah, because the files are what you see in a way. Like it is, it's almost like, yeah, it has to store stuff in memory because that's how we get it to the GPU, unless we're using the direct storage thing or whatever, but like that's how we get it to the GPU and the GPU needs it in memory because yes, it would in fact be too slow to just read what you need from disk every single, you know, cycle of the fragment shader or whatever, if you're reading a texture, right? We still need to store stuff in memory because it's still faster, but anytime something changes on disk, we get it to memory instantly. It's just all live, baby. You are, ed you are seeing the files you are editing. What you see is what you get. WYSIWYG, I just invented an acronym. And I wanna stress, this is the editor. Yeah, you're not playing a game. This isn't gonna ruin your gameplay experience. This is development, this is editing, this is just how the editor works. I just like the fact that, again, I like the fact that this accidentally came about because of the thumbnails, man. Like that's cool. And now it's like we have a, we almost have a new design philosophy for Hazel. Cool, all right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream.